It is gorgeous, 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 gorgeous up here. We are halfway to Amar Ablan base camp and the views here are just jaw dropping. Namaste Tashi the Lake and welcome back to the man who stare at mountains. We are finally back in Nepal after two long years and to be a bit more precise we are in the high Kumbu. That is Nepal's Everest region. But it's not just Mount Everest standing here. Altogether four of the highest six mountains in the world are in this region. This time I am with Toby who you might remember from the Langtang and Beyond series and our friend and guide Sukra. And together we attempt the famous Gokyo trek. But we will not just do the standard Gokyo trek, we will add a visit to Amadablam base camp to our schedule. Here are the details of our plan. We will take a domestic flight into Lukla airport, widely considered one of the most dangerous airports in the world. Lukla is the main gateway to Nepal's Everest region, including our destination Gokyo Valley. From Lukla we hike to Namche Bazar, the largest town in the region, and after spending an acclimatization day there, move on to Tengboche and Pangboche, which is our base for the hike up to Amada Blam Base Camp. After visiting Amada Blam Base Camp, we cross over into Gokyo Valley and hike up to the village of Gokyo and its beautiful lake. We will probably spend two days there, trying to climb the two viewpoints Gokyo Ri and Ngozumpatse, both over 5000 meters. If possible, we will cross Renjala to visit the town of Tame on our way down to Namche and finally back to Lukla. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. The whole adventure starts with a domestic flight in a tiny turboprop airplane from Kathmandu's domestic terminal into the infamous Lukla airstrip. Flights are usually all scheduled for early morning because that's when the weather tends to be better. These are visual flights so delays and cancellations are common. Booking the earliest flight of the day raises your chances of getting to Lukla. Tickets are currently about 175 US dollars per person one way. The flight is just half an hour and may be a bit scary as the Himalayan foothills appear awfully close to your window from time to time. Also the approach and landing might be scary. But actually, there are very, very few incidents. After collecting luggage and having the adrenaline wear off, most people have a breakfast in Dukla before starting their hike into the Kumbu. At the end of the town, there is a police checkpoint where you have to present your passport. Just two minutes later, there is a second checkpoint where you also have to present your passport and pay 2000 rupees, about 20 US dollars tourist fee.
The trail begins very easy and gradually descends down to the Dutkoshi, the Milky River, passing many beautiful villages on the way. After roughly three hours, you reach Fakting, a popular spot both as a lunch stop and for staying overnight, depending on when you get there. We got there midday, so we just had lunch and walked on. The trail has many short ups and downs behind Fakting. You pass through Tok Tok and Benka, both offering multiple lodges. You also have to present your passport again. After about one hour, the trail starts to climb. Roughly two hours after leaving Fakting, we reach the town of Monjo and decide to call it a day. Monjo is at roughly the same elevation as Lukla, so you won't gain much altitude on your first leg. Day 2 then has you reaching the entrance gate of Sagar Mata National Park after just a few minutes at the end of town. There you have to show your passport again and pay 3000 rupees, so about 30 US dollars for the national park entry fee. Also, the Nepalese army searches every single backpack in search of drone equipment. All drones are illegal in the park. The actual entry gate is a great sight. You find yourself standing high above Dutkoshi River looking into a lush forested valley with many Buddhist money carvings and paintings on the rock faces, with waterfalls down the cliffs and with the cozy village of Jorzale down at the riverside. After Jorzale, the trail follows the banks of the Dutkoshi more or less flat for about half an hour. Then you see the famous Hillary suspension bridge appear in the canyon just before you. It's a steep climb up to the bridge, but crossing a bridge that high above a raging Himalayan river feels amazing. On the other side, the first tough climb of the trek begins. It's a steep 500 vertical meters up to Namche Bazaar, the main town of the area. The trail switches back and forth through beautiful pine forests, steeply but gradually gaining altitude. At about one third of the climb, you reach a small rest stop with a public restroom and your first chance of getting a glimpse of the peak of Mount Everest. The weather must be really clear though, and you have to spot it through the trees. Shortly before reaching Namche, there is another checkpoint this time for both your passport and your national park ticket. After three and a half hours hike from Monjo, you reach impressive Namche Bazaar, often called the capital of the Sherpa people. There we will stay for one more day, giving our bodies a chance to adapt to the altitude. Namche is at 3,500 meters elevation after all, 
Luckily, there is a lot to see in Tuinamche, so spending a day there is anything but boring. We decide to use our rest day to explore Kumjung and Kunde, two large Sherpa towns a little bit above Namche. With a little luck, from there we might even see Mount Everest, Lhotse, Amadablam and other iconic mountains. Actually, the area around Namche Bazaar is quite perfect to spend a rest day and do a few day hikes. Uh, we decided this morning that we would first climb up towards the east and visit the village of Kumjung and then move on to Kunde, which is another rather large Sherpa village. Um, you start from Namche Bazaar with a rather steep climb up to the famous Everest View Hotel. You have really great panoramic views down the Imja Valley to Amadablam. We've seen Lhotse and Everest several times already and it's just beautiful. It's not 100% clear. There were clouds moving through the valley but extremely fast. It's quite windy and it gives, it gives the whole area almost magical feel to it. All the trails around Everest View Hotel are quite flat and very easy to walk. And from there, it's just a few minutes down to Kumjung. It's quite a large town actually. There first we went into a coffee shop, had some delicious coffee and some bakery items. can recommend the place actually. Uh, and then we hiked on towards Kumjung Gompa. Um, the Gompa is just really nice, it's in the upper part of town. There is a 300 rupees entry fee. Now, you might say, there are lots of Gompas in Nepal where you can go in for free without any entry fee. But this one is quite special. The major catch is it houses what is supposed to be a Yeti scalp. And it's the only place in the world where you can see one. So it's quite worth it. It's, it's fun to look at. I can recommend it. After visiting Kumjung, we are now in Kunde. It's the next village uphill. Not far uphill though. 
trail is quite flat. Also a very nice Sherpa village. Also with a pretty impressive Gompa sitting on the west side above the village. If you visit Kunde Gompa, you will also find a trail branching off to the left and heading uphill. This trail leads you to a viewpoint right above Namche Bazaar. What's special about this little trail is you can hike above 4000 meters of altitude and still be in a forest. I haven't seen this in Nepal so far. From the Gompa to the viewpoint takes about half an hour. The first part is a bit steep, but the second part is nice and easy. And from this viewpoint, in theory, you could see 360 degrees from Tame on the other side, over Namche Bazar up to Amadablam. But as you can see, we're not that lucky anymore. So we are descending from that viewpoint. We took a direct trail. Some maps show a direct trail from the viewpoint to the airfield in Siangboche and back down to Namche, uh, including maps.me, by the way. And the thing is that trail disappears halfway down and we needed to do some bushwhacking to find it again. We found it now, we're back at the airfield. It's not dangerous or anything, but a bit inconvenient. So I don't recommend trekking, taking the trail. Uh, it's better to, to trek back to Kunde and go back to Namche from there. The rest of the trail down was very straightforward. We needed about 40 minutes from the airstrip down to Namche. And with that, we're back in Namche after what I would call a very successful acclimatization day. We hiked up to over 4,000 meters. We visited the uh, Gompa in Tengboche, saw the Yeti Scalp. Uh, we had wonderful views of Everest, Lhotse and Amadablam. Had really good coffee. And now what we need is a really good Dalbat. Good morning. We are moving on from Namche Bazaar today. Uh, we start early morning because we are trying to get to the village of Pangboche. So first we will walk along the hillside and down to the Imjakola river, cross the river there. And then we want to climb up to the famous Tingboche monastery. And if we still have time from there, press on to Pangboche. We made it down to the river. It took us a bit more than three hours, but we had a tea break and we took lots and lots of pictures. So 
if needed this can be done in a lot less than three hours the first half of the way from Namche Bazaar is almost flat you walk along the hillside and you have great great mountain views the trail is in really good shape and that might be one of the nicest trails in Nepal actually and the second half descends down to the river through a really nice forest We are currently crossing the river and we will climb up on the other side uh, pretty steeply about 600 meters of altitude to the famous monastery of Tengoji. That was a really tough climb, partly really steep. It took us almost exactly two hours to come up to Tengboche. And now it's time for lunch. From Tengboche on, the trail descends a little bit and then pretty much levels out and takes you to a bridge across the Inder Kola River. So we're crossing it right now at the moment. And now we have an uphill part in front of us. Uh, that should take us to Angoche. Probably an hour, I reckon. It takes a good one and a half hours to reach Pangboche. We are now in lower Pangboche, but the upper part of that. And tomorrow, uh, we will stay here two nights, and tomorrow we will do the acclimatization hike to Amadablaum base camp. It is gorgeous, 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 gorgeous up here. We are halfway to Amarablan base camp and the views here are just jaw dropping. We can see all the way back towards Namchipasar, Tengboche, where we came from yesterday. We have Tamserko, we have Kongdiri, we even can see Numbur behind us, these mighty Amarablan and of course, we have Lotse, we have Nupse, and we have behind them Mount Everest. When we started from Pangboche, you could hardly see the peak of Mount Everest behind this huge rock wall. But with every with every step you go further up towards Amadablan base camp, you can see a tiny bit more of Mount Everest. It's just amazing.
takes a little bit less than three hours up to Amaraplan Base Camp. Uh, the trail is pretty easy. It's a very gradual climb between six and seven hundred meters of altitude gain. Um, nothing difficult, but it's very, very beautiful and also really good for your altitude acclimatization. Once you've finished exploring the camp, you can go around the hillside and within about 10 minutes you will reach the lodges of Mingbo where you can have lunch or at least a warm tea. It's about 8 a.m. and we are leaving Pangboche and we're finally making our way towards the Kokyo Valley. So first we will walk to Forze and then we are not actually quite sure which trail we will take. There is a trail on the west side and on the east side of the valley. Um, but we will only find out once we are in Forze. But this will be stuff we will be showing you in part 2 of our Book Your Trek video. If that is already online, you should now see the link in the top right corner of your screen. If that is not yet online and you want to make sure you don't miss it, please consider subscribing to our channel. That is of course completely free for you. All it does is sending you a message when we have new videos. Until then, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.